Hi everybody, Carla with Carla's Clever Crafts again. Um, we're going to be working today with these two cute little guys, well guy and gal. Um, we've got these gnome dolls. We're going to actually uh, jump out of winter for the next hour or so, work on a summer project. Um, these have cute little bumblebees and they're holding the honey stick and so we're going to work on crafting a wreath using these guys. Give me a second to get my comments pulled up. Okay, I also wanted to mention that I did just a little while ago finish a live video doing this wreath that you see above me behind my head. Um, it's got cute little paw prints and a heart sign, um, great for pet lovers, makes a nice gift. Um, it's available in my Etsy shop. Um, and then also if you wanted to learn how to make that yourself, um, you could go to my Facebook page at Carla's Clever Crafts, all spelled with a K, and find the video on exactly how to make that or your own version of it. Um, my next video, uh, we will be working on another Valentine's Day project. And we will be using this cute little truck sign with the hugs and kisses and these three little gnomes. Um, this one will be to later today. Um, so if you're interested in uh, seeing a Valentine's Day brief made with gnomes, uh, just check back on my Facebook page and you'll see me live there later on this evening. Okay. All right, let's get started. We're gonna move these guys over out of my way. We have um, oh, my standard go-to 14 inch wire frame from the Dollar Tree. I have already pre-wired this um, with the twist ties. Um, there are 12 of these around the outside two rings and six on the inside two rings. Um, if you are interested in seeing how to do this, I do have other live videos on my Facebook page and um, also on YouTube. Uh, where you can go and watch how to wire the frame. I do it at the very beginning of some of my other wreath designs. I also plan to do a separate video on just how to do that, so watch for that to come soon. Um, we're going to start uh, by working with the pipe cleaners on the outside ring only. <clears throat> and we're going to start with this really pretty yellow mesh. Um, and we're going to be doing the cruffle method again. So I have my mesh, it's pre-cut. It's These are 16 to 17 inches long. I also plan on doing a video on how I cut my uh, mesh and my ribbon tails. Um, so for anybody that's interested in that, I'm gonna be doing a separate video on that. Okay, let me angle my camera down. I think that gives you a pretty good view. Okay. Um, if anybody's watching, make sure you say hi so that I know you're there. Um, I'm going to start by folding it over on the edge and then rolling it two, three, four times. Put a clip or something to hold it on the end and then turn it around. Do the exact same thing on the other end. <laughs> this mesh that I'm working with today, this yellow mesh, as you can see, is kind of sheer um, and, and thin. It is called value mesh, and I use this kind of mesh only really in the bases of my wreath. So on that bottom layer, it's more like a filler. Um, and then, of course, you know, it does it does give the little collar burst around the edges, but it's really um, more of a filler, and it's a great way to make a beautiful wreath if you use the value mesh on the base. Um, and save money if you put it on the base and then uh, put a more designer or, or more fuller mesh on the top. Okay, so we're just going to open up our next pipe cleaner, put the folded or the finished edges to the inside of the wreath and the outside of the wreath. I always do that on the bottom row on my frame. That gives us more fullness, more width overall in our design. 
the finished wreath will be 24 inches wide and about five to six inches deep. Now I pre-started this as you can see with some of the mesh and the ribbon tails just to, for the purposes of speeding up the live and not taking up so much of your time. But if anybody has any questions, you know, when I'm finished, if, if I've missed anything, just shoot me a comment or a message and I'll be happy to get back to you. So just repeat the process, turn it around and curl the other end. Flip it over. <laughs> Put it in. The value mesh is um, less, less costly. <clears throat> and so it is a good way to, if you're selling race, um, that you can create nice designs with a, a beautiful finished look um, and offer your customers a better price point um, so they can still have a gorgeous wreath on their door but they can get that wreath at a better price. Okay, as you can see it does tend to fray a little bit. We've got a piece here on the edge that I'm going to snip off. Um, the fraying will not be an issue on our final project, however, because we're curling those ends under and that will protect them. Making sure we tuck these edges under. That will protect them from further fraying by curling them under. Two more to do on the bottom row and don't worry if um, we'll be doing the crumple method again on the next layer of mesh <coughs> excuse me so you'll get to see me do do the cur the crumple method several times Just fold it over roll it keep those ends tucked under three four turn the clip away from us do the same thing on the other end. I like to do four fold overs because that gives me, um, that gets my ends under a little bit better, particularly with this value mesh. And then if you have one sticking out like that, just, you know, take, take your time and tuck it in. cleaner and twist two times. Now here we're working to our last piece of mesh to add that in. We want to make sure that the, the pieces of mesh to the right overlap over top of the pieces to the left. Crunch it in the middle to create your little ruffle effect. And grab it in your hand so you have like a little bow tie. And then place it in, being careful to pull that mesh to the right over top of this one. Twist it down in there, pull it kind of tight, give it a couple twists. We have our first layer of mesh completed, and now I will show you how I added in the ribbon tails. We have all of our pieces for this design are cut to 12 inches. So I have I have other designs where I use six inch pieces. Um, I did not do that on this design. Um, I did 12 of every one, and we're going to use first this cute cute, cute bee gnome ribbon 
to match our bee gnome dolls. And then we have this pretty bee ribbon to go with it. And we're going to pair those two with this yellow and black polka dot, as well as this black and white polka dot. This black and white will give us a nice contrast throughout our wreath as well. Okay, so for the ribbon on the bottom row, We're going to use the black and white with the gnome. So we're going to pair those two together very quickly. Um, actually, this one needs fixed, so I'll just go ahead and show you how to dovetail. Um, fold the ribbon in half, matching up your edges. You're going to take your scissors. And cut from the folded edge up at an angle to the wired edge. All of my ribbons that I am using in this design are wired. My preference is wired because I like for my ribbons to lay a particular way on my wreath and it's easier to get shape and form and keep them where you want them if you use wired ribbons. Okay, so we're going to lay down the black first, putting the pretty gnome that we want to be most prominent on the top just making an X and then we're going to just scrunch right in the middle. Oh, sorry. We're going to scrunch in the middle and then V it back towards us. So basically just kind of creating a little crease there and pulling the ribbons back towards you. Okay. So then we place that in our next pipe cleaner. So I have the bees and the yellow polka dot there. This one will go right next to that. We're going to alternate these patterns. And since that will be the only ribbons or any, any the only things in these pipe cleaners, I go ahead and snip them off push my pipe cleaner ends down and give them a good squeeze to secure the ribbons. And then work with my ribbon tails to get them to lay the way that I want so that they all show. be set. Same, same concept, do a, like a small X, scrunch down the middle, pull them back towards us because we want to fan all these pretty ribbons out to the outside of our wreath. Place them in between the pipe cleaner. Give it a good, good, good uh, tug to get it in there tightly. Twist it a few times, and snip it off. Press your ends down in and give them a squeeze. Fix your ribbons so that they curl up and out and lay the way that you want them to. back to the gnome ribbons and the black and white. Just keep repeating this process all the way around the base. You have 12 twist ties so you're going to need six of each ribbon to go around just the base. So you'll need six of the gnome, six of the black and white polka dot, six of the yellow and black polka dot, and six of the bumblebee to do the, the first layers of ribbon. Just around the base, the part that we're working on now. Oops. Gotta cut off my pipe cleaner and press it down. Okay. We just used the gnome, so next we use the bumblebee. I'm also putting the bumblebees on top because I also want them to be prominent. Place 
those in. Pull it tight. Several twists. Hi, honey. Thank you for watching. You're going to be an expert. more sets to do. Pull it back towards us. This is our last set of the B ones. Thank you, Amanda. I usually end up doing lots of gnomes because they're very, very popular. Okay. So our last one on the bottom. So this is what we have so far after the first layer of mesh and the first layer of ribbons. So our next step, we're going to add um, another layer of mesh and we had six pipe cleaners on the inside two rings of the frame that you can see here in the middle. We need to pull those to the outside so that we can apply our mesh and continue building up our design. So we're just going to reach between. Maybe I'll do it down here so you can see better. Reach between the pieces of mesh and just pull those pipe cleaners out to the outside. Between the mesh and pull them to the outside. Okay, I'm going to do that for all six of them. ready. I'll move some of our items out of my way a little bit. And now I'm going to use this black and white striped mesh. These are also cut to between 16 and 17 inches. This mesh came from Craft Outlet if you wanted to buy this to use on your bee wreath or your bee gnome wreath. I um, also wanted to mention the yellow mesh came from uh, bbcrafts.com and then the gnome ribbon that I'm using came also from Craft Outlet and then the bee and the polka dots came from Amazon. 
so I, I shop around and, and try to get my best price. So they come from various sources. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with this mesh. We're going to roll the, fold the end over, making sure we've got our ends tucked. And then two, three, four. Put our clip, turn it around, and do the same process on the other end. Three, four, and you end up with two rolls at the end and then a piece of straight in the middle. You're going to turn the rolls face down and scrunch down the middle to create our ruffle. So what we have is a combination of curls and ruffle which I think is how they um, came up with the name Pruffle. And then, oh, I forgot to mention, previously we were placing our mesh with the finished edge inside and outside. Now on the second row of mesh, we're going to change that and turn it. So your finished edge is gonna to be to the right and to the left. And by doing this, it gives us more coverage on the base of our frame so that we don't see any of that wire frame when we're finished. Put it in there, give a couple twists. Don't pull it too tight though, because you'll lose your mesh down in your design. sitting on top with the nice yellow colors around it and the black and white showing. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. We have six ties, so we'll do six of these to go all the way around the wreath. <coughs> these finger ends is what I'm calling ties. Flip it over, curls down, and then crumple up the middle. So we have a bow tie. Place it, finish edges to the right and left. And that also gives the appearance like bows, big bows all the way around your wreath design. use any clip, clothespin, whatever you have on hand. I use the clips from the Dollar Tree. You get like four or five in a pack. Um, they're bag clips in the kitchen section. Scrunch it down the middle, small sections at a time. Pinch the two together. on the end kind of tight and smaller um, so that you are ensured that you have enough material left in the middle to be able to do your scrunching. You want them tight too so you, you have a nice little curl. Scrunch small sections so that you get the little ruffled effect. After I place it in, I just adjust them to make them look like the little bows that I want them to look like. You can pull on them and match the sides up so they lay up against each other. Get two more pieces.
last one. So this is what we have after we lay in those pieces of black and white mesh. We have this nice, the yellow shows really nice in the middle, and then we have the black and white, and then you can see the yellow um, display on the outside of it. Okay, now the next step that we're going to do is add the ribbon tails on top of the black layer of mesh that we just did. First, I'm going to turn on my glue gun and my glue pot. going to do the same pattern so we'll be doing the gnome ribbon you for the top layer you need three of each ribbon they're also cut to 12 inch pieces we're using the exact same ones the gnome the bees and then the polka dots and we will match our patterns the same way so the black and white polka dot with the gnome make an X, scrunch it in the middle, only for the top layer we don't V it back towards us, we leave it in an X shape. And then we lay that shape just like an X into our pipe cleaner and give it a few good twists. We're not going to add anything to the pipe cleaner, so we'll go ahead and snip that off and push that down in. Now I like to pull my ribbon and straighten my gnomes up if they're in there crooked so that they're laying straight. Alternating the patterns again, we just use the gnome, so we'll use the B. X sum, scrunch down the middle, leaving it in the X shape, place it in on top of the mesh. Clip it up, make sure you push the ends of your pipe cleaner down. I also wanted to mention that I, use, I try to use um, a pipe cleaner that matches the color scheme of my wreath design. That way those blend in and are not noticeable. They don't stand out. If you use pink on this, for example, um, where that ties in down there, you may notice that in your final design. No. 
ends again, keeping them facing the same direction as the other ones I've placed. A few good twists and rip off the extra. Push that down in. Make sure that our nodes are straight. Pull the ribbon out. done with this part of the process. So we're back to the B. Two more sets to go. We just did the B, so now we'll do the known. And I was going to show you, maybe put it a little closer. See, when I placed that in there, when we did the X, the gnomes are a little bit crooked. So that's where I um, grab a hold of the one side of this ribbon and the opposite side at the top. And I just pull it a little bit to straighten them out. So now my little gnomes lay straight instead of sitting crooked. watch and be careful when you're fluffing your ribbons because the wires from the ribbon uh, will get caught on your mesh so just be careful don't pull too hard be gentle or you could tear up your mesh that dovetail was a little uneven so I just took the scissors and corrected that The bee pattern, the bees are flying all different directions, so it's not as important to be careful about positioning them in. If you are watching this video live or on replay, um, it would be very helpful to me if you could like it or comment or share it. If you watch it on replay, please comment replay underneath um, so that I will know that you've watched it. And if you have any questions or um, suggestions, ideas, tips, uh, just either leave me a comment under the video or shoot me a message. <clears throat> This wreath, I have one, I have the materials. This one is a customer order that we're making right now. And then I have the materials to make one more. So there's still one, but it will be the last one um, available in my Etsy shop. Okay. So next, I'm going to go ahead and attach the little gnome dolls. Try to fix their beard and the hair. Okay. And the way that I attach them is with uh, zip ties. This is going to be 
hard for me to demonstrate, but I'm going to do my best. I have two here. I'm probably going to need a few more. So I like to make them nice and secure and snug. Okay, so I'm going to start with the gentleman. No. And I'm going to put him in the center here. Um, I'm going to position him kind of to my left. And then the lady will sit over here beside him over to the right. And the way that I'm going to attach him is I'm going to use these six inch zip ties. And I'm going to attach first his hat up here to the top using a zip tie and going through the mesh. And then at the bottom, I will also attach his leg on the left left side. I will attach his leg to the mesh. And then at that point, I will position the lady in and attach her the same way and then see if I need to do any additional zip ties to secure them up so that they are nice and secure and not going to move. Actually move him over just a little. the zip tie through. I'm using the yellow mesh underneath, not the mesh on top. This way it will hide my zip tie a little better. his leg. I usually try to do it as close as I can up here to his groin area, I guess you would call it. <laughs> and I do that, and I'm going to try to position it around that white stripe to conceal the zip tie better. That. I'm going to have to hold his leg up here so that it goes down in the right spot. And clip off the end. And again, I just push that where it snaps together or zips together. I push that down. And then position his legs how I want them. And then we have him resting kind of nicely like he's sitting inside of the wreath. Okay, so now I'm going to do the little lady on the opposite side. Attach her exactly the same way. These names are not real heavyweight, so they they hold pretty easily. Push the zip part to the back. Now I'm going to attach her leg on the opposite side that I did his, so on the right side. I'm going to pull her leg up and try to get the zip tie right across that white band on her leg to 
can seal it. Push the zipper part to the back. And then position her. See how I like them. Move the mesh around if I need to, get their legs the way I want them to sit. And that's what they look like. Now I think to secure them a little more in the middle here, I'm going to put a zip tie through his arm and her arm to hold them together a little bit there in the middle. And then I think that's probably all that I will need to attach them with. Kind of make them look like they're holding hands. zipper part to the back and that is what it looks like with them added so now um, we're going to add some additional embellishments to this we have um, some sunflowers really pretty sunflowers I believe I ordered these off of Amazon last year. We have three ornaments here that I also ordered from Amazon. We have this cute little bee honey that has a gnome on it we're going to use. And then we have this jar of honey with the honeycomb and the black and white plaid pattern on the outside. And then we have another one of the gnomes. And this one has the black and yellow plaid pattern. Okay, somewhere here, here they are. We also are gonna add a few of these little mini sunflowers throughout the wreath. And then I have some little bumblebee um, flat backs in different various sizes that I'm gonna add onto the flowers and around on the wreath. So we will start probably with the um, ornaments. I have in this wreath design, we have the six sections where we have the six zip ties on top for the second layer and we put in the six pieces of deco mesh. Um, I have three of these ornaments and I have three of these sunflowers. So what I'm probably gonna do is rotate those in the six sections. So I will put an ornament here and then I'll probably put one over here with the two gnomes across from each other. And then, oh, no, this one goes up here across from that one and then put the other ornament down here at their feet. No, nope, I changed my mind. I'm gonna move these two ornaments down here because I want a flower at their feet. And so then the other ornament will poke out of the top up here. Okay, and then the three flowers, we're just gonna put them in the opposite sections around where we just placed the ornaments. And to do this part, we're just gonna use the glue gun you're probably going to watch me burn myself because I do that all the time. So to attach the ornaments, um, I just use a really good dose of the hot glue at the bottom of the ornament on the back. And then I position it down into the ribbon hold it, get it to the way I want it to display when I'm looking at the wreath. And then I just hold that there to let it dry. Okay, that's starting to set. I'm also taking the ribbons and pushing into the back of it. 
just to make sure that it's grabbing a hold of something. So now we'll do this one at the top the same way. Be careful when you're pushing the ribbon into the glue on the back of the ornament because you'll get burnt. I always hold it there just for a few minutes to let that glue start setting up, especially, you know, these, these are a little bit heavier than like your typical flowers or things you would be adding. Okay, so now we'll do the three flowers. I just go take my glue gun, I go around the green piece and the little bit of stem that's there in the back, and then I just place it down in the middle of the X of the ribbons. So here's my X, I just put it right in the middle. <clears throat> okay, so do that two more times. Give it a little push just to make sure it grabs a hold. part. Right in the middle of the X. a few of my bees because I want to put some on the flowers that we just placed. Try to get some varying sizes. I think I've got three different sizes in here. Okay. If you can see these, I'll show you what they look like. different size bees and they have they just have a flat back on them I'm gonna glue them around I want one on each flower but I think I'm also going to put one up here on his hat one of the bigger ones I think that looks cute and gives him another dimension so I'm just going to put the glue on the hat because if I put it on this, it's going to run onto my fingers and I'm going to burn myself. So I'll just put a little bee right there. Maybe hold the back of the hat and press down for a minute. The bees Shauna came from Amazon. And to be honest with you, the hot glue, my glue gun is Ryobi um, that we ordered from Home Depot. And we also got the glue sticks from Home Depot. I'm not sure what brand they are, but I've been using them for 
a year, probably maybe two years now. Um, and this, this glue holds very well. You can buy it on bulk, in bulk uh, through Home Depot, which is why we get it there. And then the bees, like I said, um, they sell sets of them on Amazon. Um, I, I bought them last year, so I really can't say how much they were or how many I even got in the pack. In fact, you can get uh, ladybugs and bumblebees together, or you can get just the bumblebees by themselves. Okay, I think that's dried up good enough, so let's pick a couple here to put on the flowers. Again, I'm going to put the glue on the flower, not the bee, so that I don't get burnt. my hand under here and just press him down for a few seconds. Okay. We'll do, that was a medium sized bee, so I think I'll do a little bee down here on this flower. Oh yeah, he sits nicely in there. Looks like there was a little spot designed for him so cute. Okay, now let's put one over here. I'm going to probably do a medium sized one on this flower. Nope. Too much glue, but that's okay. This glue, one other good thing about this glue that I get from Home Depot is it dries clear. Um, and, and so, you know, if you have a little extra like I do under his wing there, it's just going to be clear. All right, we also have these little flowers I mentioned earlier we're going to place throughout. I think I'm going to start with putting one on her hat. We gave him a bee, so I think I'm going to give her one of these little flowers. Um, these have like a little back on them, a little stem. I think I'm going to try to cut that off a little bit. I want it to be flatter. Yeah, that worked great. These flowers, these mini flowers, also came from Amazon. So I'm just gonna put my glue, like I did the other flowers, right on the greenery part of the back. And then I think I want her flower, I don't wanna cover up the bees on her hat, so I'm gonna put her flower kinda of up to the right. Press down on it to let it dry. Oh, I think I hit the keyboard my computer. There we go. Okay, now I want to take, I've got one, two, three, four more flowers here. So I want to place those throughout kind of sporadically. I think I might do one down at the bottom of each of the little ornaments. So that will be three of them. This Ryobi glue gun does get very hot. Um, so I actually, as you can see, it's turned off. When the glue starts to get too hot on me, I will turn it off so that it cools back down and then turn it back on if I'm not near completion of my project to warm back up. I don't let it cool all the way down when I'm in the middle of my project, but I let it cool down a, a little bit just so that I don't get burnt or drizzle glue all over my entire project. a lot of glue. Um, well, if I put this one there, we won't be able to really see it. So maybe what I'll do is do one over here, like attach it in between these ribbons right here. And burn myself. I think I'll come over here on the opposite side where I just placed that one and put our last little flower on this side. But I'm going to cut this little piece off again because that gave me some trouble on the other side with getting it to place correctly. I'm 
just pulling those two pieces of ribbon kind of close together so that the glue from the flower will catch on both of them and give it something to hold to. It will not glue to the mesh underneath very well, so I gotta make sure that I have something that can grab onto. Okay, I think we'll do maybe a couple more little baby bees. Um, maybe on the little flowers that we just placed. And then we'll be all done. So I think I'll put one right here on this flower. This is going to be challenging to do just a dot. There we go. Make him look like he's climbing up on the petals there. Hold him there for just a minute till the glue starts to set. for just a few seconds so it can start to set up. Okay. And this is our finished product. We've got our cute little gnomes with their bee and flower. And then we got all these flowers around the outside edges and in the middle with cute little bees added for a nice little touch, as well as our ornaments. So this uh, is available in my Etsy shop. I mentioned previously, I only have the materials to make one more of these. So if you are interested in it, you'll wanna snag it as soon as you can. Um, this one is a customer's order, it's, so it's, it's already gone. Um, also, if you could please like um, this video, share it, um, follow me on Carla's Clever Crafts page on Facebook, I would greatly appreciate it. And then um, the link for my Etsy page, if you're interested in this wreath or any of my other items, um, should be displayed on the video. Um, but my, my store name is Carla's Clever Crafts, all spelled with a K, all one word. Um, thank you for joining me and watching today. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and you can look at uh, probably, I think it was between 6 and 6.30. I'm going to go ahead and hop back on and do another Valentine's Day wreath using this cute little sign. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great day.